episode uh, 75 of Not Unwatchable with ITU here. Yes. <laughs> uh, my name is Nicky Curtis, and joining me we have Su Fei Chan. Who you might go from Watchable and the infamous SharePoint. It wasn't infamous. Yeah, absolutely right, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was nothing. So, yeah, back in front of the camera, and um, yeah, I do apologise about that, but there's no one else we can put in at short notice. And um, what we thought we'd have a look at today is Exchange 2010. So Exchange 2010, we've done a f well, we've done quite a few Exchange ones before. We've done 2003, 2007, but we haven't looked at 2010. So we thought this would be a good way of introducing Exchange 2010 to me, to Sufe, and as without <laughs> that would take the mic out of all episodes because it'd be a bit tiresome. Um, Sufe, you don't actually do Exchange, do you? No, no, you're I just know nothing an, about it. Just an Exchange user as such. And really, your skill set is sort of on the SQL development, SharePoint. SharePoint. But you do write applications that communicate with Exchange. Yes, you? I do. Cool. So that could be a future episode. Yes. So anyway, Exchange 2010. Um, I, I'm not actually in Exchange 20 team either. Um, and I often look at Exchange 2010 people and think, what the hell do you do? Or what do the Exchange consultant be? So our job today is really to introduce what an Exchange um, consultant might do. Nothing and um, see if we can get Sufei up to their level, which will be easy. So um, before we make a start, here's just a little agenda, Exchange 2007, so we're going to just recap on some of the roles on that. Did you come on any of my 2007 no. courses? None at all. No. Okay, so a little bit of re review, and if you've done 2007, yeah, this is a repeat, but 2010 hasn't changed a great deal, so um, don't apologise for that. Then we'll look at Exchange 2010, what's changed, and then we'll finish off this episode with just an install. Okay which okay. is so easy. Um, afterward, uh, uh, after it's all going to go past eight, you know that. Because <laughs> you keep saying <laughs> it's so easy. This is true, but we're only, we're only planning to do just a bog, uh, a bog standard single server installation. And what we will do later on is look at uh, upgrading and transitioning from Exchange 2003 or 2007 or whatever you guys want us to do. So uh, first off, Exchange. Um, I suppose you wouldn't know so much about this, but traditionally with Exchange, you had... Exchange 5.5, you're probably familiar with that, or just... I've heard of it, yeah. Heard of it. <laughs> well, the issue you had with Exchange 5.5 is it maintained its own database, and that database contained mail, and it could also contain user information. So the fact that you had a mailbox, that existed in an Exchange 5.5 database, which, if you think about it, nowadays, it doesn't need to be there, because Active Directory contains all of this. Okay. So with Exchange 2000 and above, it's the first time they became Active Directory integrated, hence this slide. So in order to install Exchange into your environment, what you do have to do is just modify Active Directory. And I know you know about um, Active Directory attributes as such. And you just need to extend Active Directory so it can understand and maintain some of the additional attributes required for a mail system. Uh, for example, X500 address, I'm going to say, but that's probably wrong. But you, you get the idea of some sort of mail related -y stuff. So you will need to modify the schema. Now, lots of people worry about modifying the schema. Have you modified the schema at all? No. Any of your apps on it? No. So um, it's probably worth just mentioning what the schema is. The schema, I always say, is just a set of rules which governs the creation of new objects and what attributes they can host. So, for example, the schema will define there's a user object and it will define that there's an attribute called full name and the attribute can be contained within the object user. So what, what will happen with the schema is it's going to modify that to define a few more attributes. Now, the thing that people get scared about is when you do modify the schema, right. it is a forest-wide modification. So it's, this is something that's going to affect all of your domain controllers. So you need to make sure prior to the installation of Exchange, even if you've got Exchange 2007, you do need to extend it a bit more. You do need to make sure you've backed up Exchange, uh, backed up Active you. Directory. So you are listening. <laughs> so you need to, you need to, to back it up. Um, in practice, have I ever seen any problems with this? I, I've never seen any problems with this. I've never seen any How do you extend the schema that's part of an Exchange install? Or do you have to specially do something? It's part of an Exchange install. So the person installing the Exchange when they run setup, if that person's a schema administrator, it will actually go ahead and modify the schema. Oh, okay. Well, then that's easy then. It's it, it, exactly. It's a click. Okay. But when you get to large organisations, the person installing Exchange, i.e., let's say it might be myself, who goes into an organisation installing sort of Exchange, the organisation might not be happy with giving me schema permissions. Right. So what often happens is the schema modification is done independently and then the installation happens afterwards. So you can do it bit by bit. And if it goes wrong, you've got someone else to blame. 
So that's integration with AD, so it's going to modify the schema. We only need to do that once. Excuse me. That's your lunch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in the configuration containers, do you know about the partitions on Exchange? No. Nope. In Active Directory. Okay, in Active Directory, you've got three main partitions. You've got the schema one. That's replicated to every domain controller in the, in the forest. Okay. You've got the configuration one. That's replicated to every domain controller in the forest. So that's where Exchange stores all its information. The fact that the organization is called NW Traders or IT Edits, that's all stored in the config one. Okay. And the domain partition, that's user accounts. Okay. Okay, so that's all of that. And uh, I'll chat about the global capital at some other point. Right. Now, just like every other Active Directory application or any other Microsoft application, SharePoint, I'm sure, because it's the same, often if you can't get to your SharePoint server or SharePoint can't, or your SQL Server can't replicate DNS, first thing to have a look at DNS, can these things resolve each other? So with DNS, all we need to have is we need to make sure our domain controllers are registered inside DNS and they register a particular type of record called an SRV. Is that okay. something you come across? No. All it is, it's, it's a record inside uh, DNS, normally it, inside DNS it's just name to IP address. But an SRV record is name, and by the way, I'm offering the service and IP address. Right? That's effectively what it is. Okay. So when your clients are looking for a domain controller to authenticate, they're looking for SRV records inside Active Directory. Okay, because I know C name and then A record, so this is a entirely different... This is a different okay. type of record, yeah. So often your SRV record would just point to an A record okay. or a C name record, etc. Okay. Um, the other thing that's interesting is inbound email how do it if we set up an internal exchange server how can it start receiving inbound email and do you, have you got any idea on how that works so mx it, records so yep so you know about mx records so i'm going to just go off on one here just to do a little bit of showing off on here just to show you how you can find out your mx records so if you're for example troubleshooting mail to your organization let's say it idiots i might want to find out what mail servers are responsible for receiving IT idiots now, so I can use NS Lookup. So NS, NS Lookup, Look up. <laughs> sorry. N N NS Lookup is a tool that allows you to query at a DNS service, so I can just do set type equals MX. You might want to do this on your server. So, well, I can do it on the server, oh, I can do okay, it here, because well, this, is, this is internet connected as well, isn't it? So if I type in itidiots.com, on return, we can see that it's timed out. That it's timed out. That's not a great demo. Oh, that's a better demo. Okay, so if I take, and I can't see anything wrong with that, it's my perfected our email address. So if I take, um, I'll give you a point to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> If I take an organization perhaps I used to work for, Aslan, Aslan.com, so we can see in there, they've got three mail servers. That one is gonna be used in priority. You can see the, the weight on that, 20 and 30. So it looks like inbound is going to an internal server. Now it's quite typical to see, you know, orders of 10, 20, 30, and then one that's 100 that's pointed to an ISP. But you're nodding, so this is obviously something you, you know. I've come across it come before. Across it. So that's the only thing you need, really. If you're going to host an internal exchange server, you need an MX record that's pointing inside. Otherwise, you're never going to receive these, this email. Right, and the next thing is looking at the exchange roles. Now, I have labeled this exchange 2007 roles, and um, yeah, this is pretty much the same as 2010 anyway, so it's 2007 stroke 2010. And this is one of the major differences you have between Exchange 5.5 and Exchange 2007, was the concept of all these roles. And this is the thing that all the consultants get really excited about, you know, having all these roles and designing each role. And effectively, all these roles can be hosted on a single server. That's the first thing I would say. And um, depending on how big you are or how much mail you're going to send, that's obviously going to dictate whether you're going to scale these things out or how powerful you're going to make them. But let's just go through them one by one and see if you can guess what they do. So the first one, mailbox server, 